Hi, my name is Kyle Burnett. My name is Osoy the Bus. My name is Blake Gutierrez. My name is Nick Pearson. And we're doing a photosynthesis experiment. Yeah. Alright, this is our equipment for our photosynthesis lab. We first have the laptop, which helps show and display all of our data that we're collecting from the GLX, which is right over here. And attached to the GLX, we have all these cords running over to our our uh, temperature probe and our <laughs> dissolved oxygen probe and those sit inside of these two uh, containers. The first container has water in it and the second container also has water and elodia. The elodia is what's supposed to be producing oxygen and we have the stir there to help <laughs> to help uh, with the uh, reaction and that's all of our equipment. And we also have our light here which helps with the uh, reaction. The purpose of this experiment is to determine the factors that affect the rate of oxygen production in photosynthesis. Our group is predicting that the O2 levels are going to generally increase at a constant rate and until the end of the experiment, which is at the end of 15 minutes. A better experiment that we can have in order to measure the rate of O2 produced during photosynthesis would be a plant in a closed chamber uh, planted in soil. Maybe it's because like it's more controlled, it's sealed off chamber, and you can really see the rate of production without having to have a temperature gauge or like a dissolve O2 meter, which isn't very accurate, as we were told before. The sun provides the energy for most living organisms, but few organisms can capture the energy and transfer it into other organisms. Only plants, that, through their chloroplasts, can absorb the energy from the sun and incorporate it into molecules and store it into other organisms. This process is known as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a complex process involving numerous separate reactions that can simply be represented by a chemical equation. The chemical equation starts with C, uh, 6 carbon monoxide. <laughs> yeah. You can just delete that. As I was saying before, it is composed of six carbon dioxide, six uh, H2O in sunlight, and that makes six oxygen and uh, glucose, which is C6H12O6. Glucose, which is the fundamental energy source for living organisms. In order for plants to produce glucose, three factors must be present. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. These are the reactants in the reaction. The process of photosynthesis takes place in two parts, one that depends on light and one that is independent of light. These are called the light and dark reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle. In the light dependent reaction, the energy from the sun is absorbed in by the chlorophyll molecule. In the chloroplast and the ATP molecules are produced. During the Calvin cycle, the ATP molecules release their energy to form glucose molecules from the carbon dioxide and water that enters the leaf through the stomata. These are our results from the experiment. Uh, we have our control, which is the red, and this green line represents when the light was introduced. So we're really comparing just this information to the right of the green line. And our dissolved oxygen started to go down a bit during the beginning, but then it rose, and then it would get down, and then it would rise, but then all of a sudden it became constant, and then for some reason it went down again, and then it quickly rose, and it continued to stay constant after that, and that's our results. What we concluded from this results is that because it has a stir that makes everything move inside of the, inside of the chamber, and because our elodia is right next to the dissolved oxygen reader, is that when the elodia is emitting O2, it's the, the reader is getting a constant reading of that O2, and that is why we have a constant level of leveling off in our results. But when it dips down and it fluctuates, that's when the stir causes the elodia to move around the DO2 reader to when it's not reading the exact same constant that it was before, like it's doing right now when it's right next to the DO2 uh, reader. And that's why we predict, that's why we think our results are the way they are. Uh, one thing that I learned from this experiment that I didn't know before is the Calvin cycle that one reaction is dependent on light and one reaction is dependent, is independent. It's dependent on darkness. So basically, what most of us didn't know in this group is that there's different layers to it. We all just thought it all happens during the light, it's like quick thinking, but 
it not all happens like that. One happens like in the absence of light when you really know that. So that's what we all learned during our experiment. And that's it. I'm Matt. And I'm Brian. The purpose of this experiment is to find the factors that can affect the rate of oxygen production in photosynthesis. Alright, so here's the equipment we used in the lab. We have two containers right here, both filled with water, and we have these two probes, one measuring temperature, the other one measuring oxygen levels. And the, the data we collect is sent to the GLX right here, which then sends it to the computer to a program called Data Studio, which then puts the data we've collected into two graphs. So the top graph is for the temperature levels, the green one being without the elodia, that is the green things in the smaller container, and the orange one being with the elodia. On the bottom is the oxygen levels, the red one being without the elodia, and the blue one being with the elodia. And that is all there are. Our group predicted that oxygen levels would increase. So here are our results for the lab. As you can see, the temperature with the elodia in kind of, you know, just stayed the same the whole way. It was kind of like a constant rate. Um, and on the bottom, the oxygen levels with the elodia in, they kind of started to drop and a little change, it, but it kind of gradually went down. And I think that was because our group decided that the elodia got its oxygen from the CO2 and it kind of brought the oxygen levels down. A way to get better results for this experiment is to do the exact same experiment again, but to use different subjects, like use different plants, but uh, including this one, but to compare them and contrast them, see how the results differ and how the results like are similar. The background of our experiment was photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process of converting carbon dioxide into organic compounds using the energy from the sunlight. Here is a photosynthesis equation. We start off with carbon dioxide, which is CO2, H2O, which is water, plus sunlight, and the product is oxygen, plus C C6, H12, and O6, which is glucose. Through this experiment, we found that our oxygen levels were very low, and we concluded that it was because of all the CO2 the elodia was giving off, and also because the elodia was right underneath the oxygen probe. The process of photosynthesis takes place in two parts, one that depends on light and one that is independent of light. These are called the light and dark reactions, or Calvin cycle. In the light-dependent reaction, the energy from the sun is absorbed by the chlorophene molecule in the chloroplasts, and the ATP molecules are produced. During the Calvin cycle, the ATP re molecules release their energy to form glucose molecules from the carbon dioxide and water that enters the leaf through the stomata. Keep in mind that the plant needs energy for its other functions, growing and reproducing, so it is always undergoing respiration to use some of the glucose produced in the Calvin cycle for these functions. Hi, I'm Berto Diaz. I'm Hank Tiraba. I'm Howard Lee, and our project's on photosynthesis lab for Loyola Apes. This is uh, the Loyola Apes Photosynthesis Lab. Um, we have uh, plants that are in water right now, and we're actually starting with the plants first. Uh, we're doing the opposite of the normal lab, and up there we got a uh, dissolved oxygen sensor and also a temperature probe to measure both the oxygen and the temperature are the oxygen content in the uh, plants and the temperature that the plants are in. And uh, we got a few graphs. The green one shows the temperature, which is staying pretty constant in about 22.8 degrees Celsius. And then we got this graph of the dissolved oxygen, which is uh, about five, four and a half, five milligrams per liter. Okay. Photosynthesis is a complex process involving numerous separate reactions. The chemical equation can be described as carbon dioxide plus H2O plus sunlight, a source of energy, yields oxygen gas and glucose. The, six, the C6H12O6, otherwise known as glucose, is a fundamental energy source for living organisms. Animals which eat plants are able to convert the glucose into energy through a process known as respiration which is a reverse chemical reaction of photosynthesis. In order for plants to produce glucose, three factors must be present, sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water.
The process of photosynthesis takes place in two parts, one that depends on light and one that's independent of light. These are called the light and dark reactions known as the Calvin cycle. During the Calvin cycle, the ATP molecules release their energy to form glucose molecules from the carbon dioxide and water that enter the leaf through the stomata. Uh, our prediction for this experiment is, since there is now an absence of Elodia in the experiment, there will be a slow but gradual decrease in dissolved oxygen. Furthermore, we predict that the temperature will remain at a constant and neither increase nor decrease. You got this. As shown in the graph, the temperature seems stable throughout. As you can see, the temperature does not change relatively. And um, in the graph below, the red graph represents it with Elodia, for, uh, that was a five minute experiment. The blue graph uh, represents the experiment without, without Elodia, so just pure water base. But as you can see, there are little water, there's still little grass particles floating around. That represents, um, that represents dead particles which decompose yielding uh, carbon dioxide. And as the bacteria starts to eat these little dead particles, it yields oxygen. And, um, and as a result, it respires. The reason there is a fluctuation in the blue line is partly because of the turning on of the steer, which causes the dissolve oxygen to in itself fluctuate. As you can see right here, we have a sharp decrease in oxygen, and that is partly caused by the turning off of the steer. But again, you can see a sharp fluctuation as a result of us turning the steer back on. So another experiment that could better help demonstrate the process of photosynthesis would be uh, to add fish or some other kind of living thing into the water because that would like better help, uh, it would change the oxygen, uh, the oxygen content in the, in the water because fish have to breathe. And also, it would like better demonstrate what actually happens in actual like rivers and bodies of water because there's obviously other living things in water other than just plants. In this uh, photosynthesis experiment, we did the opposite of what most groups say. First of all, we put these, as our first phase, we put the loaded plant for the first five minutes. With the loaded plant, the dissolved oxygen level tended to decrease gradually because the loaded takes some more oxygen in the environment. As it's um, stirring, it begins to stir, um, it, I guess, speeds up the reaction in a sense. When we took out the loaded and did the 15 minute experiment, which is plain water and little components of uh, loaded particles, the Dissolved oxygen level uh, remained the same or was stable throughout the experiment.